Wrestling is an intense world where the athleticism of the Olympics meets soap opera story arcs. There's betrayal, there's revenge, there's ladders, and you better believe that there's amnesia. With all of this bombastic spandex in play, it's easy to forget there are real people inside these wrestling costumes, with lives that sometimes become every bit as dramatic as the stories they're paid to act out. Sometimes, all that intrigue comes to a head with the untimely passing of a wrestler, leaving fans with more questions than answers. Steve Bradley Born Steve Bisson, the wrestler known as Steve Bradley had a tumultuous career. He started wrestling professionally when he was just 15 years old and would wind up working for Power Pro Wrestling and the WWF slash WWE feuding in the ring with Savio Vega and traveling the world before being cut loose in 2002. On the morning of December 4, 2008, Bradley's body was found in a parking lot in Manchester, New Hampshire. The lot was adjacent to a wrestling school he once operated, and there were no witnesses to his passing. Bradley had been indicted on possession of heroin charges in the months before his death, a not infrequent twist in the lives of athletes who suffer from chronic pain, but a cause of death has never been determined. Police cited no suspicion of foul play, and the death of Steve Bradley remains a mystery to this day. Espectrito Dos and La Paquita For the uninitiated, there's a subsect of luchador wrestling called Mini Estrella, or Little Star, traditionally dedicated to wrestlers with dwarfism. Two of the more prominent names in the sport were Espectrito Dos and La Paquita, real-life twin brothers of Alejandro and Alberto Jimenez. Alejandro was especially popular, eventually working with the WWF as Mini Mankind. After wrapping up a show in 2009, the Jimenez brothers were escorted back to their Mexico City hotel room by a pair of prostitutes, where the two women laced the brothers' drinks with eye drops. According to their latest statements, they only intended to knock the Jimenez brothers unconscious and rob them, but the dosage they used was intended for much larger people. Both brothers were fatally poisoned, with some questions being raised about whether their murder had anything to do with Alberto's recent interest in local politics. Bruiser Brody Even after 30 years, the deadly stabbing of Frank Donald Goodish, aka Bruiser Brody, remains highly suspicious, in no small part because it occurred in close proximity to his colleagues and there's still no straight answer as to why it happened. It was July 17, 1988, in Bayamón, Puerto Rico. Bruiser Brody was prepping for a match when he was approached by Jose Hertes Gonzalez, a wrestling colleague known as Invader One, who asked him to step into the shower area to discuss a business proposition. What happened next is unknown, but we know Gonzalez stabbed Brody and that the crowd gathered for the event prevented paramedics from arriving in time to save his life. Gonzalez pleaded self-defense and was acquitted of murder, after most of the American witnesses didn't receive summons to testify in the case until the trial was over. Shady business. La Fiera Little is known about the death of luchador Arturo Casco Hernandez, aka La Fiera. He was a second-generation wrestler, the son of Hercules Poblano and the brother to Angel Poblano, both luchadors themselves. Arturo was probably the best known of the three, having held a couple of belts before he went into soft retirement at the beginning of the 2000s. And then on September 10, 2010, he was found dead in Mexico City. We know he was stabbed five times and it's been speculated that he was attacked as a result of his rumored involvement with hard drugs, but that's about it. The truth has not yet come out. Abismo Negro Wrestler Andres Alejandro Palomeque Gonzalez, aka Abismo Negro, was on a tour bus just after midnight in March 2009 when he started acting unusual. According to witnesses, Gonzalez suddenly became panicky and demanded to be let off, despite the fact that the bus was in the middle of nowhere. He got lost in the dark, and his body was later found floating face down in a nearby river. It's been speculated that Andreas was suffering a steroid-induced anxiety attack when he exited the vehicle, but these reports were never confirmed as his cause of death was simply listed as drowning. The Benoit Family Seemingly out of nowhere on June 25, 2007, a superstar 22-year veteran of professional wrestling went from beloved icon to horrifying monster. 
Former champion Chris Benoit found dead in his Atlanta home along with his wife and young son. Police now treating the discovery as a double murder-suicide. Over the next few days, it was revealed that Benoit had murdered his wife, Nancy, on the night of June 22, 2007. The next morning, he sedated and killed their seven-year-old son, Daniel, then eventually took his own life by hanging himself. Relatives blamed drugs and drug-induced paranoia. At 4 p.m. on June 25, the police arrived at the scene of the crime. The news broke shortly after that, or it would have if the news had already broken half a day earlier on Wikipedia. Hours before anyone supposedly knew anything about the deaths of Benoit, the Wikipedia entry on Chris was edited by an anonymous source to include a line about the death of Nancy. An investigation started immediately, with the culprit eventually turning out to be a habitual Wikipedia editor who cited rumors and speculation from other websites. People still wonder how that prediction was so eerily right.